In today's video, we're going over automatic air vents on hydronic systems. And so this is a made of mist. I'm just doing a quick little video just showing you what's inside and how these are serviceable and this one is not. As you can see, I actually grinded this one open and inside you have just a little float. And basically what happens is this is installed at a high point on your hydronic system or you might have multiple of them and so this is also installed on the top of older systems with air scoops uh, and so you just this will be the automatic air bleed assembly for the system this needs to be completely upright and so basically what happens is this gets filled up with water if there is no there's no air if there is air then this is going to drop down and it's going to end up opening up the little tiny a uh, hole down in here inside the Schrader valve and you can see that little valve is popping up and down and so that's how that works and so this can get clogged with residue on the inside of that that Schrader valve right there and it may not reseal uh, and so it'll just seep water out and that's why sometimes you see this cap completely on fully tight and so therefore the automatic air bleed is not able to do its job. And it's because anytime you loosen it, it's seeping water out. In that case, in the made of mist version, you're gonna have to replace that. Uh, in this version right here, you're going to be able to open up this in order to get to the inside, but realistically you have to have valves there on, you know, to stop the water pressure from coming through in order to then end up servicing this. And so, Right here, it's a very similar arrangement. You have a float, but there is no Schrader valve on this particular assembly right here. And so there is only just this little rubber piece down in here. And so you see it looks like a little funnel there, and then you can close it. So anytime that this is full of water, this is gonna come up and it's gonna close that little spot right there. So the little rubber piece up against the plastic piece is going to close it. And so you can certainly just clean this out and then put this right back in here again when you're done and just make sure that the walls are all clean. You wanna make sure that this is completely vertical. And uh, basically you're always gonna have air uh, in water. Like when you go to fill a boiler, it's even gonna have micro bubbles and you might need something better than just a just an air scoop and uh, an automatic air vent or a high, high point vent. You may need an actual air separator, uh, and that's what we're typically putting on the newer boilers. And that has a little coalescing material and a, and a low velocity area, and it's actually able to get the micro bubbles out of the out of the system. Now here's another one right here. As you can see, this is very dirty, and so this really needs to be cleaned. Otherwise, this is just going to be seeping water right out of the top. Now as well, you can also, instead of just having a regular cap like this, you could have an anti-siphon cap put on it. So you have to think about where this uh, vent is installed at. If it ends up being in an area where it's, say, low in pressure at some points, it may even pull air in instead of just letting air out when it's, say, at a higher pressure time. And so that's something to think about as well. So you can get a different style cap that would allow air out but not allow air in. So air may get into a hydronic boiler system even if you say set the initial pressure at 12 to 14 psi when it comes in or when you're flushing it and then it's maybe 18 to 22 or something like that if it's at a high temperature. See once the temperature gets higher or once the water uh, makes uh, contact with the heat exchanger you're going to have the micro bubbles forming and so water is typically always going to carry a little bit of air and the other thing is you could have a leaky spot in a low pressure area of the of the boiler where it's pooling air into the system or you could have PEX piping that doesn't have that oxygen barrier. So there's a, a variety of ways in which air could get into the system. You could have some leftover air in the system from the initial uh, flushing of it. And like when you're refilling a boiler or filling it for the first time. So there's a variety of reasons why air could be in the system. So if you have something like this installed, they're supposed to be automatic air bleeds, not fully capped off and not able to function. So you just wanna kinda be able to service these, or in this case, you have to replace them in order to then end up having them do their job properly. And in an emergency, obviously, you can just go ahead and shut the caps down so they aren't leaking 
onto the boiler. So if you're servicing a boiler and you find that the cap is completely tight, either one of two things happen, either the installer or the last technician didn't understand how this worked and it's no longer functioning as an automatic air bleed if this cap is completely down and tight with these uh, normal caps. And so you either want to loosen them up and see if it's going to be leaking water. The other thing is, if at all possible, you want to be able to service these and then allow this, basically you want to tighten this all the way down and then back it up basically a quarter turn to allow it to be automatically bleeding the air from the system during operation. If you want to learn more about boiler components and their operation, make sure to check out some of the other videos that we have linked down in the description section below. And if you want to learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out our website over at acservicetech.com where we have a bunch of quizzes, articles, and HVAC books for refrigerant charging and mini splits and other various resources. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.